what makes you the right guy to kind of reshape that room? Well, I think um, I've been lucky enough to be around some great coaches and had some, some great exposure to different systems. Um, being in the NFL and being around some great college coaches. And so I think, you know, uh, and then also being around Coach Meyer's system and being in this uh, environment, um, you know, that mixture, I think, makes it a uh, good fit. Hey, Ryan, you guys have a lot of talent in this quarterback room, and you guys have continually, even since before you got here, been able to get commitments from top-rated quarterbacks, despite the fact there's three or four of them in front. How do you guys continually convince top-rated quarterbacks that could play sooner elsewhere, commit to your program when there's a log jam at that position? And like, what's the sales? Well, I think it's like that at every position here. And when you're playing for the national championship and you're competing at the highest level, that's uh, what young men want to be a part of. And so, you know, we don't we don't make any promises. You know, when you come to Ohio State, you get a chance to go compete with three or four other quarterbacks in a row. And, uh, and guys want to be part of national championship drives and be developed at the highest level. And so that's why they continue to come. But there's only one that plays at that position, unlike any other position. You know, you can say there's a lot of corners that are playing on four play left. You see the, you know, the difference. Sure. And I wonder if that's more difficult or what the process is like trying to convince somebody that is recruited unlike anybody else because the position is special, but at the same time, I'd have to wait longer than any other position to get this chance, if ever. Yeah, but no other place is Ohio State. Brian, when you look at a backup quarterback battle, it's different than a starter in that maybe you don't need to rush to a decision. Um, when would you like to have one? Do you, do you need to make one before the opener, maybe? Well, I, no, and I think every day, you, know, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, someone could roll an ankle tomorrow. I mean, anything could happen. So we're just right now focused on one day at a time, getting better. We're in preseason camp, and, uh, and then we'll pick our head up pretty soon and figure it out. Is Can evaluating you, a backup race the same as picking a starter? How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, you're evaluating, and, and you, you want to find um, the best guy to go on the field whenever that opportunity presents itself. So, yeah, you're using the same criteria. Coach, Brian, can you just give us a nugget on each one of those guys sure. on Haskett and, uh, and Burrow? What do they do? What do you like? Yep. Um, Joe is a really smart, tough uh, football player. Uh, he's a coach's son, really smart in the classroom, um, good skill set, and uh, has a good control of the field when he's out there. Um, and he's been in games, you know, yeah. so he has some experience. And um, he was a guy that, that uh, you know, can manage the offense or run the offense. He's got a strong arm. You saw in the spring game, made some, some balls down the field, threw some nice balls down the field. So, um, so that's Joe. And then Dwayne, um, very talented throwing the football. He can get the ball out of his hand very quickly, extremely accurate. Um, and uh, and he's, he's coming along really too in the classroom as well. Um, doing a nice job learning the offense and picking it up. Coach, what's the biggest yeah. gains you've seen from uh, JT Barrett this spring or this, this preseason? And I don't know if y'all had conversations, mm -hmm. the conversation before preseason started on what you kind of wanted to see out of him from an advanced uh, What has like just really popped? Yeah, right? today I'm proud of, uh, like watching him today, I'm proud of first off the command he's out of the offense and the quick decision making he's making uh, or, um, you know, from practice to practice. You know, the ball's coming out of his hand quickly. Uh, he's confident in what he's doing. His eyes are right. And so the ball's coming out on time right now, and uh, and you can tell that he's got a rhythm about him when he's playing in position. Does it does it seem like he has confidence also in who he's throwing to? I mean, does that add up to it? Of course. Does that add into the mix? Of course. That, yeah. yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, he's taking a lot of ownership. That's a big uh, push for us this year is, is ownership. And so, uh, you know, he's, he's been do, doing some work with the, with the other skill guys in the, in the film room by himself with those guys. And, um, and so, yeah, I think the – the communication and the relationship between the skill guys and JT has been great. What's the bonus of having a guy who's been a three-year starter at that position? Uh, he's been there before. Um, he knows what's real and what isn't. When you get up on the board, you put something on the board, he knows. He can visualize it. He's been there. It's not just – when you take a rep on the field in practice, I talk to those guys all the time, the higher, higher level you go as a quarterback, you have to play with an imagination. Every time you take a snap, it's like being in the horseshoe, uh, you know, playing against Oklahoma on a Saturday night. Uh, it's being at Indiana on the opening night on Thursday night. It's not just another rep out on coffee fields. And he can do that because he's been there. Ryan, who's the best thrower on the roster? I don't think there's any one best thrower. I think they all have a lot of um, a lot of great skill sets, uh, but I wouldn't say that one guy's better than the other. In this offense, what you guys want a quarterback to do, how important is strong arm, good accuracy in the scheme of all the other things you need a quarterback to yeah, do? It's a piece of the pie. and. Um, I wouldn't say that it's any more important in another area. I think that uh, when you take somebody's skill set and you try to tweak the offense to fit what they can do. And 
you, know, you can take turns, and this offense has a lot of flexibility that way. Did you bond pretty quick with those guys that speak the same language very quickly? I think there's a respect level there. You know, I, I got a lot of respect for them. Yep. Uh, they're very talented, and they're very good in the classroom. And I think that when we go in there together and have conversations about football, uh, I think they respect the fact that, you know, what I tell them and what goes on in the meeting room happens on the field, and they can carry that over. Hey Ryan, how advanced is Tate Martell? Uh, obviously, he played in a program that's like one of the more advanced programs in yeah. high school. But how much has that translated, and is he an advanced freshman in your eyes? Uh, you know, the good thing for him was that he was able to come in and get his feet wet, as you know, uh, this spring, which is obviously the mid-year is a big deal. Um, so he was able to get a, you know a little bit of foundation there in the offense, which was great. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, it, at, at Gorman, he would play in the spread offense. So he's done some reading of linebackers. He's done some reading of defensive ends. So we had a little bit of head start that way. Do you think he'll redshirt this year just because of the, the great depth you guys have at Corbett? Do you think Tate's probably going to redshirt this year? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, the last time they won the national championship, it took three. Right. And, um, you know, who knows how this thing's going to turn. I mean, like I keep telling those guys, they, they have to distrust the process, but one day in front of the other because you don't know what tomorrow brings. So uh, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but we're going to need depth. And back to the backup quarterbacks with Joe and Dwayne, could you envision a scenario, Ryan, where you guys don't really name a backup quarterback? Maybe those guys are kind of co-backup quarterbacks all year. Do you need to find one guy who's your backup? I don't know. I don't know how the next week's going to play out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ryan, this is similar to what Ari was asking about recruiting, and, and I guess you've answered this a couple different ways. But with Joe, he's spending multiple years behind the same guy. Uh, I wonder what you've seen from that relationship and how maybe he handles the fact that he's always known as JT's backup. It seems like. Well, I think uh, Joe and JT are very, very close. Uh, you can see it from when they're in the meeting, uh, from when they're in the locker room, off the field. They get along really well. And they support each other. Although they're fighting for the same position or playing the same position, uh, they support each other. And obviously, they want to play. But that's one of the challenges of our unit. You know, we talk, Coach talks about nine strong. And one of the challenges for uh, the quarterbacks, like you know, someone said earlier, was that only one plays. Um, but we also have in the back of our mind what happened uh, with the national championship team here. And so those guys are just working at it and trying to support each other when they're out there. And I think when you see in practice one of the guys make a play, it's not a couple other guys there looking at him like, oh, he made a play. They're, they're supporting him. They're running in the end zone celebrating with their teammates. So. How do you characterize Tate in terms of personality? Is he a typical freshman or does he bring sort of an it factor? What would be your take on him? Um, you know, yeah, he, yeah, he, he's like other freshmen in that, you know, this is new to him, and, and he's working his way through that. Um, in terms of on the field, he's dynamic with his feet. He's, his short area quickness is, is excellent. And so um, when he's in the game, he, just want, he wants to be live. He wants to play. Um, the minute we're on the field, can I be live? Because that, that's where he, his best game um, shows itself. Um, and so the other parts of the game are coming along. Do you ever have to talk to guys about their social media presence and He's a bit of a celebrity, I guess, already. Uh, tone it down, be 30%. Well, I'll give long. you this one. I'll give you this one. Just the other day, to start off the meeting, uh, we put a picture of his tweet, which was a picture of himself with his tattoos and his uniform up there to start the meeting. And so the guys gave him a hard time. So, Coach, we've heard a lot about the vertical passing game here and how much that needed to be worked on. But Coach Wilson talked about a few weeks ago the horizontal passing game and extending the field that way. How, how are the guys doing that? And how much is that important as well as the vertical passing game? Yeah, it, it's, it was one of the huge emphasis that Kevin and I, when we got here, really wanted to uh, attack. And so um, you can see, obviously, in the, uh, in the spring, that was a big emphasis. It still is in this preseason. Um, and then horizontally, we want to do it as well. And uh, our skill guys uh, are talented. They've been around here for a while. They're reliable. They're accountable. And so um, you know, we, want to, we want to feature those guys. Is that something you didn't maybe see on film as much last year when you go back? They didn't maybe utilize the side-to-side -side game as much as they might, maybe should have? Again, I wasn't here last year. I just know that uh, with, with with our offensive line, our running back, and our tight ends, and obviously our quarterback, you know, they want to gang up on us. And so, in order to be um, operating at a high level, we want to make sure that we stretch the field vertically and horizontally. Right. I didn't Along see this in spring, but uh, how do you judge a Tate Martell to a JT Barrett to a Dwayne Haskins Jr. to a Joe Burrow? I mean, those aren't four peas out of the same <laughs> pod. I mean, you know, how, how do you just like? Kind of like when you start figuring out a pecking order. What what just comes first in your mind? Leadership, um, being able to push ten other guys on the field down the field to score a touchdown. At the end of at the end of the day, that's what you have to do, and that's what the great ones do. So yeah. they come in different shapes and sizes. So Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Cam Newton, Matt Ryan—they're all shapes and sizes. They're all different. 
but at the end of the day, they're moving the team down the field to score a touchdown. And so uh, there's a lot that goes into being a quarterback. And so those things uh, that come with moving the team, uh, delivering the football, making good decisions, that has nothing to do with your height, your size, anything like that. And so those are the things that we talk about all the time. And then obviously within their skill set, we try to you know, do the things on offense that uh, you know, illustrate what they can do. Yeah, the reason I'm asking, I mean, Tate, it seems like every chance he's gotten a shot, he's gotten the ball to the end zone or some way, somehow. You know, we hardly ever get to watch much, but is there such a thing as a guy having a knack? I mean, for, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And usually, you know, when you have somebody young who moves the team down the field and maybe it doesn't look pretty, but he scores in the end zone, usually, you know, you got one. So uh, that's what we're looking for, if that's what you're asking. Ryan, on the backup quarterback battle, first game against Indiana, don't the quarterbacks need to know? For that game, if JT gets hurt, who's going in? Well, I don't know uh, how it's all going to play out at this point. Obviously, you know, we still have a lot of time, but I don't believe they do. Um, you can have them on the sideline that something happens to JT, and Dwayne and Joe both sort of look at you like, "Hey, who's going in?" Well, I, 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 sure. I wouldn't say that, but you know, even even the week leading up, and I'm not saying we're going to do that, but I'm just saying I've been in situations before where even the week leading up to the game. You know, we weren't too sure who was going to be in a certain situation. It wasn't just quarterback. It might have been another position as well uh, because things change. Injuries happen, different things. So, uh, again, we're, we're in camp right now. We'll see how the next week or so uh, plays out. Can I ask you one? Go, let me go. Two more questions. Where are you in a risk reward in terms of interceptions? I mean, there's two philosophies. Clemson threw a lot last year, and yet they won it all. And yet here it's been that's like the worst thing you can do in the world. There's been some theories that tightens a quarterback up, or it's okay to throw him if it's in the, within the system. What, what's your philosophy? Yeah, there? well, obviously, um, in the plan to win here, turnovers is huge, and obviously that's timeless, and it's it's proven to win, it's infallible. So uh, we're going to play within the plan to win. Um, that being said, one of the things that we spend a lot of time talking about as quarterbacks is throwing the ball to contested receivers, and uh, you know, in the, my my experience the last couple of years, nobody was open. So you had to throw the ball to contested receivers. And that's not throwing the ball into traffic. That's not throwing the ball foolishly and making poor decisions. But if a guy is, is covered and contested, where are we throwing that ball where only he can catch it? And so that, that that's, to answer your question, that's how we're being aggressive without being foolish and you know not playing within the plan to win. Can Brian, you teach Arthur? that? Last question. Or is that sort of a knack that guys have of knowing when to take a chance? Some, some do it naturally, but I think you can teach it. Did, Brian, you, see it enough, did you see it enough on film last year, throwing contested balls here? Um, you know what, to be honest with you, uh, it, it's something that we've been really working on with JT. Um, it's something that uh, you know I believe in. And really, what I did more than look back on last year, whether it was done or not, was when we were in practice, just talking about the different route concepts that we're running and where the ball needs to be placed and really emphasizing that on film on a day-to-day -day basis rather than going back and looking at it. Are you surprised Colin Kaepernick is not, is not with the team yet? Maybe he signed and I haven't heard about it today. But I mean... Or are you surprised by that? Well, I, listen, in the right system, um, in, in the right situation, he, he can play. And, uh, you know, I hope for him he finds the right situation um, so that he can, you know, get back on the field and show that he's still capable of playing. And I know Jerry some things. We've been asking everybody, if someone knew nothing about JT Barrett, yeah. said, came to you and said, Ryan, describe who this guy is mm. as a player. That's, what would a you say? Question. That's a great question. Um, mature. Uh, driven, tough, uh, relentless. Uh, he's a winner, um, and, we, and, and I, I kind of knew those things when I came here. But on a day-to-day -day basis, watching it firsthand, I'm even more impressed. To be, you know, to be very, very honest with you, um, has a confidence about him, a quiet confidence that he knows he can do it, and uh, it's fun to be around every day. And, and, uh, I, I've only been around it for you know, about six or seven months now, and I'm sure Ohio State's going to miss it when it's gone. We talked about it today. It's the last time for everything. And uh, he had a great practice today. He went out there and really practiced hard when it was uh, you know, Monday, week what, three or four of camp, and, and uh, I'm proud of him. He's, he's working really hard. So I hope for him he can finish this thing out the way that he wants.